Uh, good afternoon. Oh. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started since the last session ran over. Uh, first of all, it is an honor to be here. Thank you all for uh, sticking out and being with the uh, last official sessions at 2012 Sages. Uh, we can have a wide group of things, topics to talk about, uh, but all related to the uh, technological advancements uh, for the uh, rural surgeon, for the uh, combat zone, for the robotics. Um, and uh, we're very honored to have a, 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 a great speaker to end our session with, um, who will give us a lot of experience and, and a lot of uh, perspective on the advancements we'll talk about. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Our first speaker is Nin Nguyen, uh, talking about telementoring. Um, he's a grant award winner for the American Medical Institute of Telementoring. Uh, he's going to give us an update on his uh, research. Dr. Nguyen. Thank you, Rob, for the invitation. And certainly, this is going to be a small session. So for the people in the back, if you would like, just come on up front, and we can have a, a lively discussion after this. I, don't, I do not have any disclosure. And my task today is to uh, discuss about the current state of telementoring, uh, the rationale for it, the uh, current state, and also our uh, SAGES telementoring uh, project that we're currently doing. So under this umbrella of telemedicine, which is really delivery of healthcare at a distance here, our, uh, uh, our specialty of telecommunication, telementoring, and also telerobotic surgery here. So essentially telecommunication is exactly what it is, communication at a distance uh, uh, for certainly for a procedure base or even diagnosis. Telementoring is ability to guide. It's more interactive. You can direct, interact with another surgeon at a remote location, particularly during an operation. That's what we're going to be discussing about today. And then so, uh, certainly others will discuss about telerobotic surgery. Uh, that is the ability to perform surgery on a patient at, at a remote site, particularly in the battlefield. So we are faced as general surgeon with the new techniques and operation that's commonly uh, developed, uh, certainly advanced laparoscopic operations such as uh, laparoscopic esophagectomy, uh, laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, robotic technology that's coming out, and, and new uh, innovative uh, management of a gastroesophageal reflux, particularly the endoscopic approach. So the question is really how do we learn these techniques able to disseminate it and actually disseminate these techniques at a safe uh, uh, effort. So currently, this is a teaching modality right here. So if you have a new technique, let's say the POEM procedure, that is the endoscopic modality for management of achalasia. So if I want to learn the POEM procedure, the question is, what do I do? Right now, I can certainly come to SAGES, a meeting like this uh, goes to the didactic session here. They also have a hands-on course for the POEM procedure, so I can get my hands wet a little bit to learn about some of the nuance of the uh, instrument that's uh, needed for this operation. But this is probably not enough to start and just going from a hands-on course and actually performance of the operation. Certainly, the next step is really on-site mentoring program. That is like a mini fellowship where you actually go observe the operation and also in return have someone proc to you doing your first several cases or even first cases here. I think that the, the gold standard is really surgical fellowship, but really this only applies to recently graduated surgical resident uh, that enable to take advantage of su uh, such uh, learning experience here. Uh, otherwise, uh, everyone who has graduated uh, many years ago are, uh, are really, this is the current teaching modality here. The disadvantage of these teaching model, as we can see here, is number one is time consuming, uh, both for the trainee and the trainer. So the trainee has to go to the trainer's site to observe the case and vice versa, where then when the trainer goes and proctor the trainee. And with that come the costs associated with all these uh, traveling, but also really taking time off of work. Uh, certainly for the expert surgeon, uh, it will be difficult for him or her to actually take time off of work to go train somebody. And certainly uh, you can do only do that once. And, and most of these advanced operations, a single preceptorship or proctorship is probably not optimal. So telementoring, again, is an active real-time guidance. So as you, you can see here, a surgeon here performing his first laparoscopic uh, anti-reflux operation, for example, here is being guided by an expert surgeon uh, through uh, telementoring, uh, other uh, 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 
word for it is teleproctoring, uh, preceptorship, and even telementor. So the history of telementoring uh, dated back in 1959 when University of Nebraska implemented telemedicine network to support their education and research effort. In 86, the Mayo Clinic implemented two-way satellite program between the Rochester and the Scottsdale Clinic. In 1996, Ramshaw performed telementoring for rural surgeons, certainly using uh, uh, back then the T1 uh, line. So uh, there is definitely a lag with uh, these uh, uh, but technology has improved since, and these are just the essential component of modern telemetry system here. So certainly you need a monitor, the microphone, and a telestrating system, and it has to go through a secure network with um, minimal delay. And then on the other side, really, you are able to look at both the laparoscopic view and the operative view uh, uh, on the uh, uh, trainee side. So this is uh, uh, Steve Rosenberg looking at the initial experience of surgical telementoring uh, here using the in-touch robot, as you can see here. And actually, the trainer can actually able to navigate this particular robot uh, to actually visualize the operative feel. And you can see here, this is what he sees on the other end here, looking at the babies and actually mentor uh, a pediatric surgeon uh, to undergo a certain type of uh, a new opera procedure, and part of that you can actually telestrate, as you can see here, and point out the uh, important aspect of the operation that the surgeon needs to pay attention to here. So as you can see here, these image has to be adequate enough for the uh, expert surgeon to able to delineate uh, the anatomy. So that's another important aspect of uh, tele telementoring. Uh, this is actually a study that looking at the use of uh, telerobotics, essentially just a camera here uh, hooked onto the light pole here to observe inside the operating room. And uh, they tested really the use of uh, tele uh, mentoring in subspecialty skills. Uh, for the general surgeon, they utilize a surgical resident and ask them to perf uh, perform penetrating uh, chest trauma here. This is actually a, a tibial fracture, and uh, this column is a subdural hematoma. So they actually coach these surgical residents to do perform of these tasks. As you can see here, the old perform, overall performance is significantly better when they're proctor than when they're not proctor. So it does make sense um, to, uh, that proctoring does improve performance. Uh, similarly here, this is operative performance, breaking down to all these uh, criteria here. And, uh, and again, when you proctor somebody, it's significantly better than unproctor. And these are some of the questions they ask the resident, as you can see here, even for a uh, operation uh, 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 that's very uh, not familiar to them, as you can see here, that, that they, they really appreciate the proctoring and really help uh, them to perform the procedure. So telemetering is not just for uh, uh, training uh, a surgeon uh, on new procedure, but now it's actually used for surgical training period. Uh, this is actually a lab that's being set up in France here, and this is a surgeon in the U.S. that's actually mentoring a surgeon in France to perform a certain procedure in the lab here. So you can actually take this from the clinical uh, bedside to actually in the laboratory and actually perform very similar uh, educational uh, uh, effort. And, and this is actually a study demonstrated that uh, uh, you can actually train uh, through telemedicine as, well, as good as when you train someone uh, with the present of the surgeon uh, right there. So this is a local surgeon versus a, a telemedicine surgeon, as you can see. Uh, this is just an example of a grasping task performance time, as you can see, it's reduced here uh, after uh, 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 mentoring, and similarly is reduced after telemedicine uh, mentoring here. So the advantage of telementoring is gradual incorporation of new techniques, and the key here is that you can actually able to do this multiple mentoring session, unlike the conventional uh, method is really just a single session here. So by that, it reduces the cost and time constraint of traveling, particularly for the expert surgeon, and also uh, it can be used as a repetitive training tool for the resident and the surgeon here. But certainly, there are also a limitation of this uh, uh, technique. There's an uh, issue with licensure, uh, across state line, hospital credentialing of the, of the uh, preceptor and also the liability coverage here that needs to be uh, worked out. 
Uh, there's also cost for the, the acquiring the actual telemetry system. And then certainly, last but not least, is the image time delay here. So I think the, the standard is that to minimize the uh, time delay to less than uh, 400 millisecond. As you can see here, uh, originally the use of the modem here is very slow. You can actually have up to 12 second delay and that is not a very good system for telemetry. So you're gonna have to be in this particular range here using ISDN or the ASDL uh, line. So um, with regarding to the state of telementoring, this is actually a very good article that's uh, about to come out in uh, surgical endoscopy. Essentially, it's a comprehensive review of uh, telementoring application in, uh, in laparoscopic general surgery. And you can see here uh, 10 papers that evaluate a variety of procedure, including colon resection, uh, anti-reflux surgery, inguinal hernia, cholecystectomy. And essentially, the conclusion is that telementary is safe. Uh, as you can see here, many of these studies demonstrate uncomplicated process and, uh, and the uh, mentee uh, uh, were able to learn from, uh, from the uh, uh, expert surgeon. Here's an example, one of that particular study where um, uh, a surgeon was um, a proctor on three cases and then subsequently here uh, further with telementoring. Uh, uh, perform 27 more cases here, 15 were done laparoscopically with 33% conversion rate, and, uh, as you can see here. Uh, telemetering is now even broadened to uh, intercontinental. As you can see, this is a, a surgeon in uh, Johns Hopkins here, uh, telemetering a surgeon in Brazil here to perform uh, urologic uh, procedure. And, and, and we can take that even further to what we call tele-rounding here. Here's the surgeon uh, actually rounding on, uh, on his patient here with the nurse here using the uh, in-touch uh, health system here. So one of the new bariatric operations that's uh, coming uh, is really the sleeve gastrectomy here. The outcome is really between somewhere of the gastric bypass and that of, uh, of the gastric uh, banding. And SAGES uh, has been granted uh, a grant from the Foundation of Advanced Medical Education here. And this, uh, the procedure of target that we're going to be looking at is sleeve gastrectomy. Why? Because sleeve gastrectomy now has become uh, one of the common operations uh, uh, being performed by bariatric surgeon. Uh, and it, it, re it will require laparoscopic skills uh, to minimize complication. So prerequisite for the mentee is really currently performing uh, sleeve gastrectomy, so we're not taking uh, exactly the novice. Uh, so you have to perform some type of sleeve gastrectomy procedure right now. Uh, currently, we um, uh, will perform this grant uh, if the mentor and the mentee are within the same state, so to minimize the issue of uh, liability and also licensure. Uh, and the endpoint that we're going to be looking at is really pre and post blinded video evaluation of the surgical proficiency and also satisfaction of the mentoring uh, process. So with that, I would like to conclude and thank you for your attention.